you're found. You are no longer lost. The landfill was a terrifying place at first. The nights were long, cold, and smelled like a damp version of the dump during the day, usually because it rained. It rains every night in the landfill. You couldn't tell what was a worse cold, the stinging bite of the wind amplified by the wind tunnel-like valleys between all the trash piles, or the icy fingers of the mud that surrounded every part of your body as you slept. The day was mostly bearable. Everything except that rotten smell. A smell so unbearable. And yet you bore it, and wandered aimlessly every day, looking for a way out of this filth. That was when you were lost, but never fear, I said you were found. One particularly cold night, while you were trying to slip into some form of sleep in your mud bath, you caught a brief glimpse of light out of the corner of your eye. You jumped out of the mud to see, just around a distant mountain of trash, what looked like the flickering light of a campfire. Now you are found. As you round the corner of the valley of death you had been wandering, your eyes are greeted by a bright, beautiful light, your body by a soothing, warm heat, your nose by a smell that wasn't nearly as bad as the past couple of days have been, and your ears with the sound of laughter. Everyone turns to look at you. They are a raggedy lot, but what could you expect from people who live in a junkyard? You aren't looking too hot either. But the hospitality of these people was far more beautiful than their external appearances could have implied. You are instantly welcomed by everyone. 574, get the china! We've got a newbie! An authoritative man calls kindly to an older gentleman in the back. While everyone is hustling about and welcoming you, you start spouting questions that to you seem desperately important, like, Where am I? How did I get here? Who am I? Why don't I remember anything? Everyone seems to be ignoring what you're saying. Everyone but that authoritative man. You, he seems to be listening to you intently, although he still does not answer you. Finally, the table, or the long plank of rotting wood set on top of four rotting things that worked as legs, is set, and you have a bowl of something that resembles food. The bowl says China on the side. You are unsure what China is. It is at that point that the man speaks. Your questions are interesting, not because of their individuality, but because of their thorough multiplicity. You are confused. Look around you. Everyone here, even myself, has woken up in the same situation you have. We all found our way here and found shelter and fellowship among other people who understand us. No one has memories from before waking up. Now, let me ask you a question. If every other instance of us, we aren't sure what to call ourselves besides us, has no recollection of what life was before this rotting wasteland, then maybe it would be logical to conclude that there was no life before, and this is simply how life works. If that is so, then we will make the most of it. This story was brought to you by Big Brother. Hello, I'm Anderson Crow, and you are listening to your local Teakwood Live broadcast. Now, I think we can all learn a valuable lesson from this little story. Of course, we know that human life doesn't one day be non-existent, and then the next day produce a fully functioning grown human. That isn't the point of the narrative. The point of this parable is that the characters found themselves in an impossible situation that had no point or hope of changing. And what did they do? They didn't try to rebel against life. That would have just hurt them and everyone around them. They didn't even fall into a deep depression due to the seeming meaningless of their lives, for which no one would have blamed them. No, sir. Instead, they created a working, productive society and accepted that this was their lot in life. Remember, listeners, it is far easier and safer 
to accept where life has put you and to follow the example of everyone else around you. Individuality is dangerous, and it could lead to rebelliousness, which always has dangerous consequences. Big Brother doesn't want you to hurt yourself. They are only asking you to be good, patriotic members of our wonderful town. It is in your best interest. In recent good news, the military police were finally able to clean up that mess on Roadway 5. If you'll recall, about halfway through the last week, there was an unfortunate spillage of infinity all over Roadway 5. It turns out that a transport semi on its way to the reclusive research laboratory was the cause of this traffic inconvenience. As the truck was driving along Roadway 5, the latch on the storage capsule of actualized infinity broke, and the impossible mass of pure empty space oozed all over the road and trapped everything it encompassed in an inescapable, non-existent prison. After about a week's worth of standing and staring at the problem, often punctuated with a good head-scratch or a thoughtful, huh, the reclusive researchers at the Reclusive Research Laboratory, whose identities as per usual remain anonymous, were able to fix the problem and fit all of that infinite space back into finite boxes. One researcher, when interviewed, explained very thoroughly, Don't think about it. Really, don't. Actualized infinity is off-limits, no thinking about it whatsoever, unless you have the proper thought clearance from our wise and benevolent mayor of all she surveys, like myself. With that, I divert your mind to another topic. Here is a word from our sponsors. This is District 4 Neighborhood Watch Program. We wish to inform the city that we have a job opening for head surveillance camera surveyor. We became aware of our need for a new one when we received a notice from the Disappearing Guild that our old head surveyor had been disappeared in order to attend some emergency re-education in direct response to an unspecified crime he had recently committed. The notice also said he will not be returning to his post. Therefore, if you wish to submit your request to be District 4's new head surveillance camera surveyor, simply say so. If inside, add a normal conversation voice. And if you're out on the street, simply tell the nearest lamppost. There is no guarantee that if you apply, you will get the job, and no guarantee that if you don't apply, you won't get the job. Those who apply will simply be considered first. You will know you have the job when you wake up in a room whose walls are completely covered in hundreds of small screens with no visible exit except a small hole through which food will be delivered. Thank you for your cooperation. And remember, if you see anything suspicious, unpatriotic, or rude, describe it in detail to the nearest lamppost, mailbox, or traffic signal. Thank you. Listeners, I have an exciting update coming at you live from the Elementary Academy of Teakwood. Our friend Anna, the beloved first grade teacher, due to her outstanding work, achievement, and development of new educational techniques, has been promoted by the superintendent of the Federal Academies of Teakwood to headmistress of the Elementary Academy of Teakwood. When asked why she is so passionate about the education of our city's children, she replied, I see it as my duty to protect people, to protect people from dangerous ideas. We can't have people thinking for themselves. Unrestrained individual postulation is incredibly dangerous. If people started thinking, they might have an idea. 
and if they have an idea, they might form an opinion. If too many people are thinking, having ideas, and forming opinions all on their own, some people might reach different conclusions from other people on important topics. As impossible as that sounds, it has been known to happen. Those different conclusions, if spoken aloud, our wise and benevolent mayor of all she surveys forbid, could lead to disagreement, and disagreement to argument, and argument could become aggressive or even violent, and that leads to nothing less than death. Therefore, it really is better to just leave the thinking to those in educational and re-educational authority over you. For students, the Federal Academy of Teakwood will work diligently to teach you what thoughts are legal and safe and to protect you from illegal, unpatriotic, and dangerous thoughts. If you're an adult already in the workforce, Big Brother posts weekly updates to the collection of thinkable thoughts so that you know exactly what to think about all week long. I'm excited to begin executing my plans for the Elementary Academy of Teakwood, and you can expect to see several improvements coming soon. It is my hope that the Elementary Academy's new strategies will be utilized by the other schools as well as they see fit, she concluded. The young woman has a very promising future in our school system. I wouldn't be surprised if she became the new superintendent of the Federal Academies as a whole, in the near future even. Well, that would be the first curfew warning bell. Hard to believe it's six o'clock already. Make sure you are indoors before 6.15, folks, whether that's back at your dormitory or at your place of employment to begin the night shift. Just because the sun has stopped being productive for the rest of the day doesn't mean the factories should also. Remember to read your newspaper tonight so you can keep caught up and be a well-educated citizen. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Anderson Crow, and you're listening to your local Teakwood Live broadcast. Make sure you tune in tomorrow as well. There were a couple of unfortunate incidents where people forgot to tune in yesterday, and we don't want anyone to miss out like that. Good night, listeners, and remember, all is bliss. <laughs>